people with jobs that require you to go into strangers' houses, what is the weirdest thing you've encountered? Here's a gross story. Posted in a different question a while back. A few years ago, when I was an apprentice, me and my qualified colleague, we'll call him Sam, I was shadowing, got sent to a bungalow belonging to an elderly resident to install an extractor fan in the end suite of his bedroom. The gentleman was going to be away on holiday during the install and had left a key in an outdoor wall safe so we could get in and do the work. Nice easy job. I went straight to the job in the morning so I could drill the 4 inch hole through the wall for the duct work. Sam went to the wholesalers to get the parts and materials then would meet me on site. So I pull up to the house, knock on the door, even though I know he's not been in for 3 weeks at this point, force of habit, you never know. No answer, so I punch the code in, and get the key out the wall safe. I put the key in the door and opened it. Instant gag reflex. The smell was so bad I'll never forget it, it was like a vomit smell almost, very unique though. I put on my respiration mask from my bag, which I'd put on to drill brick anyway, and pushed on. I opened the door to the bedroom, smells even worse. Jesus, what's this guy been doing in here? Kept gagging, but walked on. Then the worst part. I opened the door to the bathroom. Instantly vomiting in my mask, my legs turned to jelly, my stomach doing cartwheels. The gentleman was in the bath, dead. He'd obviously been there a long time. Three weeks, at least. I dropped my tools and ran outside. I took off my mask and wiped my face. Shaking and sweating horribly, I had to sit down. I took me a few minutes, but I rang the police. Lit a cigarette and rang Sam while waiting and told him what had happened. He knew I wasn't joking as my voice was so rattled he later told me. He arrived a couple of minutes later and was actually very comforting. I don't blame him for not going inside. Few more minutes later, the police arrived. I was still in the same place I sat down when I'd come out the building. I could not get up, I was almost frozen in fear. One of the policemen was very sympathetic and helped me up. I gave a statement and they gave me a lift home. Will haunt me for the rest of my life. A goat in the living room. The mother came down and shooed it outside. As a pizza delivery driver, I wasn't required to go into anyone's house, at least on paper. In practice though, it happens. If I were doing the same job now, I'd be much more wary of going into someone's house, but at 19, I thought I was invincible and didn't care. I have tons of pizza delivery stories from back then, some I've even told on Reddit before, but I've never told this one. There used to be this log cabin looking house right in the middle of town. It's since been demolished, but it was legitimately just a very large log cabin sitting in the middle of a city. It was probably 10pm when I went out on the delivery. I looked at the address, looked at the wall map to see exactly where I was going the days before GPS and realized it was the log cabin. I'd always noticed it, but had never visited it, nor did I know anything about it. So it was kind of exciting getting to see who actually lived in this place. I arrive and pull into the driveway, and for the first time, I noticed it had three separate doors. A, B, and C. I'll be damned, it's a triplex, I thought. The address was for unit C, so I went to unit C, and knocked on the door. As soon as it opened a wall of stink knocked me across the face. It smelled like, I don't know, a mixture of bus and unwashed crotch. A woman answered wearing nothing but a t-shirt and panties, which wasn't particularly strange for my town, but when she raised her arms, I could see her tits hanging out the bottom of the shirt. Let me impress upon you, these were not tits I was particularly keen on seeing. She was, I'll say, worse for wear, in the looks department. Plus that stink, Jesus it was insufferable. She turned around and said I gotta get my pocketbook, will you set it on the counter? Extremely hesitant, I crossed the threshold and saw the counter right next to me. I set the pizza down. She came back out with the exact change and a copy of The Last of the Mohicans on VHS. She handed me the money and said have you seen this and plops the video in my hands. Uh, yeah, years ago, I say. Well now you own it, she says. 
the damn movie is so good. I stare at her, and the tape for a moment, and I'm like I mean, if you like the movie I don't wanna take it from you. No it's fine, she says. I got like 50 copies of it. Right after she said that, I noticed her TV was on, and, no shit, Last of the Mohicans was playing. I remember clearly it was the scene, where the guy was being burned alive. Okie doke, thanks, I said, and left. When I got back to work, I told my manager I just delivered a pizza to the log cabin in town, and he looks at me, and says did she give you a copy of Last of the Mohicans? She did. I replied. Yeah I got a copy from her too. Not particularly scary or anything, just weird. I never had a delivery for her again. A neighbor called the police, after noticing the mail piling up outside of a neighbor's house, never ever a good sign. I get the check the welfare call and go with a backup car. No answer at the door, so we try to look through all the first floor windows when my partner spots a foot in the hallway. We forced entry and found the elderly female barely alive. She had fallen two days earlier and had a broken hip. Fire slash rescue came and got her to the hospital in time. I know not the weirdest thing finding her. We had to grab all the prescription medicine we could find to take to the hospital. It was then that we found her mummified husband sitting in the bedroom chair. Coroner said he had been there about 6 months. I was 20 years old working as an internet installer just over 10 years ago. A cute girl a little older than me ordered service so, while I was at a house surveying, both flirting, I told her I had to trace some lines down. It was a studio type middle suite she was renting behind the house as she was in college. Started tracing lines, and had to look behind her bed. It was just a mountain of used tampons, she had been shoving them under, and behind her bed. The rest of the house was relatively clean. I used to work as a sound system installer years ago right out of high school and the strangest thing to me was seeing wealth. I came from a home where we collected cans for quarters, I shared a room with two other family members, and shopped from groceries at the Dollar Tree. I knew people were wealthy and there was rich people out there, but I had no first hand experience. Job order came in, usual setup of audio for a TV room. No biggie, on the drive to the house we entered what was like a royal district to me. Big lawns, big houses, stone walls with those statues on every other post, shiny polished cars and ore trucks. That was the outside, inside though felt, like I walked into some estate out of a movie. The husband was lawyer, wife was a doctor, 60s I believe, and lived very well. It was one of those houses, where there was a giant painting above a fireplace of the husband and wife with their two dogs. The sound system went into at the time I guess, could be called a home movie theater. Husband loved old westerns and even kung fu films. I remember he had a Bruce Lee poster I wanted, when I saw it. Nice chairs, adjustable lighting and the dude had a popcorn maker in the mini bar area. Little enclosed environment for cigars and another for wine. Basement was like a classy game room. Big billiards table, card table, pinball machine and a tap. Pool out back, and on top of it all a mini library he said he set up just for his wife. The couple were extremely nice, one thing was strange was I expected the snooty look down stereotype, but they were so nice. That's how I got to tour the house, because the guy was like, hey bud, wanna see something cool, and proceeded to blow my mind. Not the most strange or weird story I know. But it was weird to me, to see that right in my own city there could be this level of wealth. It was like culture shock. It took a while, to shake the feeling of like I jumped into another world and I will never forget it. Not that bad I know, but to my poor young eyes it was so weird. So this was back, when I was a student on a placement in community mental health services. I went out on a visit, to see a man who was just recently discharged from a medium secure hospital, he had schizophrenia slash psychosis, we were going in for a routine checkup. I knock, he opens the door, and this incredible stench just hits us in the face, and I thought I was gonna throw up right there. But alas, my supervisor urges me to go in, we walk into his house, and it just smells so bad. My eyes were watering. I keep my composure, we chat to him, and I notice some black thing on his kitchen table, looks like rotting food slash mold slash tiny dead mouse. IDK, 
so after chatting, I casually ask him what that black thing is, and if he needs help cleaning it up. Oh it's my toes. What? The? Fuck? Yeah right cut them off, they didn't fit right on my foot. Needless to say he was immediately readmitted. He reportedly cut them off with a kitchen knife, and then seared his wound with a lighter. I believe he had to have his entire foot slash baloney leg amputated, because it got infected. It's my time to shine. I used to work as an installation technician for a popular satellite TV service. I saw everything you can think of. Naked people, lonely housewives, hoarders, drug addicts, filth you wouldn't believe, porn mongers, too much to list. My most unforgettable story was a time I went to a house out in the country. A little shitty looking from the outside, but I wouldn't judge customers based on that. I go to the front door, it's blocked off. I go around back, up some steps to the back porch. The customers welcome me in through the sliding glass door which must be broken, because it only opens about 10 inches. This guy and his wife are sitting at the kitchen table with their three teenage daughters, all with lit cigarettes and clearly strung out slash hungover. Again, not my life, and I'm not one to judge. I do my normal bit, that I'm required to say, and then get to work, putting a dish on their roof. I come back in, and tell them I need to go into the basement, to run the lines for their new boxes, and this is where it gets fun. Oh, you don't want to do that, buddy, says Mr. Customer. Why not? 10p slips asks politely. It's really the only way I can route the cable, where I need to. Because, says Mrs. Customer, our septic tank backed up into the basement. Fuck me, I think to myself. This is going to smell, but I really had no other option. Here's the thing, their basement had a door to the outside, that was frozen open. It was February and but a cold. Their septic system backed up, and filled the basement with about a foot of shit, which then froze solid. I go into the basement, and spend a good 30 minutes running cable over my head balancing very carefully, as I'm now basically ice skating on shit lake. And now it gets scary. When I'm nearly done in the basement I realize I can hear them yelling upstairs. Not like a parent scolding a child. I hear multiple voices shouting at the top of their lungs. Keep your head down, I think to myself, finish the job, and get out of here. As I get back upstairs, I'm hit with a wave of noise. Every person in the house is yelling, and I see that two people are being held back from each other. I duck into a room, and start connecting boxes, so I can get the fuck out. Apparently, one of the daughters had a boyfriend there, and they had a disagreement. He said something nasty to her, and then she told her mother, who confronted him. More words must have been had, because then it turns into a physical and violent altercation. It's at that moment as this 40 year woman and teenage boy are being restrained, and screaming at each other, that the mother yells, if the fucking cable guy wasn't here, I would kill you right the fuck now. All I can think at this point is, that I need to get the fuck out to here. I don't want to watch a murder, or have to deal with police. I practically ran out of that place, no signatures, no follow up with the customer. I didn't get paid enough for that shit. To give an indication of how fucked up this job could be, on my very first job, basically shadowing another tech, dude's house was covered in dog shit and I saw his testicles. Thanks for watching, and share your stories. Don't forget to consider the idea, to maybe think about potentially subscribing. Peace.